Hey everyone, welcome to Pokemon tonight, and we're going to get back into Disturbed, and uh, get back into where we were at, but instead of me continuing on the path, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, or with the grass path, I'm going to pick, it said pick grass or something like that, pick at the grass. As you pick at the grass blades in, uh, in your reach, the ground begins to shake. Before you can get up, roots from below sprout from the ground and wrap around your legs. Oh god! This reminds me of fucking Mortal Kombat. <laughs> you turn around and see a large, angry face looking back at you. Your jaw drops in horror. Yeah, that's a good reaction there. No sound of scream escapes your tongue as the tightening grip of the roots squeeze what air is left out from your body. Your adventure ends here. Don't fuck with nature, apparently. Alright, don't... You can't even pick the fucking grass. Okay. Continue on. See what happens. Suppose to see that there is a lake nearby. The trail continues on to your right. Inspect the lake. You step near the lake and look down into it. Resting on the water is an orb of some oh, sort, sitting on, on, on the bottom of the lake. There is something strange about it, as if we're calling out to you. Oh boy, let's dive right in! Close your eyes and jump into the lake. You open your eyes to see the stone sitting before you, you start to make your way toward it. It's like an angler fish. A large fish comes into view. Uh, it quickly notices you with its mouth stretched open. You try to leave before the surface, but the fish catches up to you. You quickly find yourself helpless before the creature. You close your eyes so the giant fish rips your body apart with its teeth. You die a very painful death. Your adventure ends here. <laughs> they don't need a fishing <laughs> Yeah. The faint trail comes to an end. There is a collection of stone pillars down the hill. Beyond the hill is a large field of grass. Inspect the stone pillars. You stand before the large stones that rain in the shape of a circle. In the center is a stone with what appears to be some sort of slot or hole. No doubt about it, something is meant to be placed here. Seeing that you can't do anything, you head back. Okay. Explore the field then. You find yourself gazing over a grass field with your with hills rolling off onto the distance. As a trick upon your eyes, you see a unicorn run across the field. It disappears out of your sight before you can do anything. Unicorn, what the fuck are you doing in my game? Surely the unique powers of a unicorn can help you with your quest, but there is clearly something wrong. If only there was a way to charm it. Okay. Unicorn, how can I charm you? <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's go back to the grave, and then we'll go back again. Continue down the path. <laughs> you walk for some time to find an endless field of grass. There is a stone well near the path. Inspect the wall. You appear down the well. Other than the evident water at the bottom, there is a coin resting against the wall of the well. If possible, you feel you should go down and take the coin. Why not? Lean over the edge of the well, there is no possible way you can obtain the coin by reaching for it. Within this mine, you turn and climb down the inner wall inner wall of the well. Take, excuse me. You take a few successful steps down, but your luck runs out. You misplace your foot and you fall. Oh, fucking worse. Something about your body and clashes against the stone walls. With a single knock on the head, you lose all consciousness of your accident. And with a splash, you fall into the water. Your body sinks effortlessly. You're drowned without realizing it. Your venture ends here. Well, shit. Me trying to be a cheap bastard. <laughs> All I wanted was a coin, and I died for it. Ignore the well. Fuck you. You walk over the hills of grass and grain, you reach the walls of Aramar. Several times a year, you come here to trade you know, goods from the farm. You discover the plague that has spread to your farm has also spread all the way out here. The path before you is overwhelmed with light. It's continuing across. You've come a long way, and you don't desire to turn back now. You march forward into a tainted soil. Before you can realize what happened, you sink completely under the ill soil, darkness consumes you, and your lungs struggle for air. Your body burns in pain as you suffocate and die. Your venture ends here. God damn it. It was all for nothing. <laughs> These achievements. Alright, anyway. Yeah, and I've noticed in that soil and stuff, there was these mushrooms. Yeah, I noticed that too. Alright, well, let's not take the path to the left, because that just leads to death so far. Let's go right this time. You reach the end of the pathway, and the distance is a tower looking over the area. A gate secures passage to the area with a wall around the property. Also of interest, there is a tree that has a hole carved into it. Inspect the tree. You approach the tree and notice the hole is big enough to fit your hip. 
Or you know, it's gonna leave something bad. We'll fucking do it anyways. You look and see something shiny in the halls if we're, if we're metal. The last time I looked for something shiny, I fell into it and died. <laughs> Filling around with your hand, you find three nods. One on the right, one centered in the middle, and one on the left. God damn it. All right, press the nods. Oh, god damn it. Left. Middle. Right. Nods lock in place. You wait for a minute, but nothing happens. It must be some sort of combination. Okay. Left. Right. Middle. All right. We can do this. Okay, we're we'll going to come back to that. We might find, like, the combination for it. Because we've done all three uh, combinations of, of types when it comes to left, right, and middle itself. But now I'm thinking about whether well, there's a duplicate left, left, or a duplicate middle, middle, you know? All right. Let's go to the gate. Approach the gate cautiously. Enter. All righty, then. Standing before the tower, your heart begins to sink. This is no doubt the birthplace of, a, of the spreading plague. There's a fountain before you uh, with statues on your right and left. And inspect the statue on the right. Before you stands an old angel that has broken in many areas with one hand and the angel is holding some sort of bowl while the other is, hand is hovering over the bowl. You notice that there is only two remaining fingers on the angel's other hand. If you should keep your distance and just observe the statue. Okay, then. Don't tell me it's gonna turn into fucking, like, Doctor Who with the weeping angels. Eh. You see an old statue of an angel that has been consumed by vines of thorn. The angel is holding a book in one hand and the other with a finger pointed up towards the sky. You feel it is best to leave the statue alone. Oh, shit. No, no, no. Enter. Inspect the fountain. There's a dark haze about the fountain. The water is black and the smell burns with every breath. You, sit, you feel a slight pull towards the fountain as if it were calling you for something. Wait, what? We're calling for something. Okay, apparently we're just not going to touch it. You approach to the door. As you reach for the doorknob, an invisible barrier stops you. It must be some sort of magic. Okay. Hold on. Two rights, one left, maybe? That's what I'm thinking. No. Wait. Oh, that was it! Okay. So the angel had two fingers, and he was on the right, and then there was the angel on the left, which had one finger pointing up. So it was right, right, left. You hear the rumbling of rocks as the ground starts to shift underneath you. Everything goes dark, and you sink below the surface. The hole above you seals up, trapping you underground. Well, shit. You find yourself in no evident way out, but the path before you into the darkness, your only choice is to move forward. Well, shit. <laughs> you see three stupid pathways within the wall of the cavern. Which do you choose? Let's go left. And constantly make your way to the darkness. God damn it. Let's go left again. You move forward into the darkness. Why? I'm just making a circle. Okay. Let's try forward. Because it's forward into the darkness. Let's go left. You hear a subtle echo shifting rocks before you. Oh shit. I prepare a voice that gaze, as its gaze pierces the darkness. Before it, you can do anything, tentacles burst from the ground and grip your body. It pulls you about, but you resist as much as you can. Not sure what you can do, you continue to resist until you can think of something. Your body begins to grow weak as your strength burns away. You suddenly feel yourself pulled to the ground and you are dragged about like a rag doll. It's not long before the creature devours your body, leaving nothing behind. Your adventure ends here. Well, goddammit. Got roped by a roper. Now let's see what happens when we go right. Unless we end up dying again. Nope, okay. So matter which way you go, you die. Okay. So don't go. Damn, I forgot to save. Okay, sweet. Now they're not dying and now it goes all the way back. Alright, let's go right this time. Uh, let's go left. You walk forward into the dark, unsure what lies beyond. Uh, let's go left. And we made a circle. Let's go right. Go well, right this time. Ah, shit. Ends. The passage soon ends to a large mushroom sitting in front of you. A steady river of water flows beneath you in the mushroom. 
Inspect the mushroom. You walk forward to the mushroom as if there was something more than... Let me decide. Walking forward, you take a step into the water. You, to your dismay, your foot hits no bottom and you fall in. You reach to grab a hold of the edge of the surface, but your body freezes stiff. You lose your sight completely as the chilling water sends your body into shock. Without any sense of touch and warmth, your lifeless body sinks into the darkness. The adventure ends here. Figures. <laughs> That's what the achievement is, yeah. Okay, well, nice now I can shortcut back here. Alright. So let's go right. And left. And then right again. Ooh. So you make your way forward, you discover a large cavern, cavern, an old looking ship rests against the edge of the lake with debris scattered about the surrounding area. Inspect the ship. You cautiously walk down towards the ship. The air is chilling and you fear it won't be a good idea to stay too long. The possibility of discovering something that can help you drives you to explore. You come aboard the ship. As you take a moment to observe your surroundings, you are only welcomed by the trickle of water brushing against the wood of the ship. You move about to see where you can go. Every footstep you take feels heavy as you hear the sound of wood cracking under your feet. Let's save here. Yes. Alright, you feel the ship has been here for quite some time. You swore on the deck of the ship. Nothing but the sound of your footsteps bounce about the structure of the ship. From one room to another, you come to discover a kitchen. Although there is nothing unique about it, you feel you should take a moment to inspect it. Inspect the drawers. You pull one drawer out of another, finding that they only they have been emptied. Dust spreads about the air as you just disturb the rest. Checking underneath, you discover a rusty knife resting on the floor. You find that there are plenty of hardened rat droppings dotted on the edge of the wall. You take the knife in hopes that you may defend yourself with it. Inspect the oven. You see a lone pot resting upon a dusty stove top. You gaze downward and open the oven door, and nothing but ash filled with something, whatever. Close the oven door. Okay. You continue your lonely tour of the ship, only to find that there is nothing to use the value. You go back to the deck and decide to continue on your search. Again, you find nothing more about empty rooms. Let's remain in the dark and solitude. Is there a door with fancy markings about the woodwork? Perhaps this is where the captain resided? You discover the room of the captain, unlike the other parts of the ship. Everything seems to have been left alone in this room. Before you, re before you rest an old wooden desk with papers and assumed belongings of the captain, there's a small bed off near to the corner of the room, and some chairs into the other. <laughs> you have a feeling deep down that you shouldn't take in uh, anything other than a lamp and other objects. There's a small stack of papers in contrast to a lone paper resting by itself. Pushing the desk, you begin to inspect the papers resting on the desk. Stack of papers. Hearing about the pages of this collective pile of documents, you realize that most of these are personal notes or journal entries. You pick a few and begin to read. Day 7. The voyage is going quite smooth as we begin our second week away from home. The spirits of the men are high as we anticipated the discovery of new lands that lie beyond our documented knowledge. It has been my dream to accomplish something world-changing. Together, we can move forward with full hearts and unbreakable spirits. Day 66. It has been just over two months. Out of sea. Now out of sea. We have just yet to discover anything new. We have suffered. Sorry. We have suffered through many storms and sickness has plagued the ship recently. Several of my favorite crew have passed on to the next life. I hope that these aren't the guys that caused the plague that we're having now. I see the growing doubt in the eyes of my fellow laborers as our voyage continues day after day. Food rations have been cut in half and fears that we may have to turn back. I dare not let myself think of failure. Those men have lost their lives as... Ah, oh, shit. Okay, I'll go back. Cool. Those men have lost their lives as sacrifices to make this voyage possible. I cannot let them be in vain. Day 91. It has come to roughly three months out of here in the endless blue. With much pain, we have to turn around. Yes, we are headed for home port. We have just enough food to make it back. I just hope we have a smoother journey back. The spirits of the crew are low and bitter due to our failure. I do not let myself get caught up in thinking of it. Truly, we did not intend for this to happen. Well, no, notice to the crew. Due to our unexpected predicament, everyone is being split up into groups of two and three. Scaling assignments will be given until we find a more ha ha habitatable yeah, place to settle. For now, we must do what we can. Since there is little left to see, you take your leave. The wood under your feet crackles as you exit the vessel. Make your way back to where the tunnel divides. All 
All right, now we, I think we should be able to have what we need to take on the that one monster. Go left. Mm -hmm. Yep, you remember the knife you have found and struggled to bring it out. Let's assess you hold the knife and me and cut away the hinges that bind you. The room vibrates as you do cut, and the creature immediately leaves you alone. It takes you a moment to catch your breath. You come to a divide, which way do you go? Let's go left. God damn it. We went into a circle. Right. Difficult. A path you walk comes to an end. Before you shines a pillar of light. A light rests on a corpse that seems to have been here for quite some time. Near the corpse stands a lone flower. Ah, for the night. For some reason, you feel hope enter your heart as you gaze upon the flower. There is something special about the scene, but you can't put your finger on it. Perhaps it may be best to leave in reverence for now. Son of a bitch. I never talked to the guy, so I need to go back to him. Oh, uh, okay, well, that's going to be sucky. I'm going to have to actually restart the game and talk to the guy first, and then everything should make sense. But eventually, I'll come back to where we're at and stop there. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. This is Boogman's Nightmare, and I'll see you in the next video.